What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. We're brought to you today by Oakley. Oakley has established themselves as the sunglasses company made for activities, but they also have eyewear made for everyday use as well. When you wear Oakley, there is more than meets the eye. Get a pair for yourself by going to oakley.com and check out all of their amazing products. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. How are we doing? <clears throat> is this your new house, your doing? new office? This is still temporary. Everything's temporary right now. Uh, yeah, but no, new house. It's, you got um, three, and, three doors back there. It's blowing my mind. I'm like, where do all those doors lead to? There's two doors. There's one. Oh, you can see three. There's a, there's a, a closet under the stairs, a closet into a room, and then a closet in the, in the actual room itself. That's well, good. You finally closet. have closets to store all of the Bronx pinstripes t-shirts. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> They're in the garage right now, but yes, I, I do. I do have closets now, so that's not an issue. I would like to get rid of them in some in some capacity. We should do a massive giveaway, but then I would have to ship all of them <laughs> <Yes>. out too. <laughs> giveaway as long as you can drive to driving vicinity to Scott, so you can go pick them up. <laughs> right, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, look the 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 White Sox are are a thing. Uh, I think the Yankees should have taken two of three, but. Um, Unfortunately, the way that the the ball bounces, uh, they, they did not. They did not. The bullpen, you know, wasn't wasn't there. But uh, and nor was Severino really. And I don't know what we're thinking about him. I don't know if it's time to worry about him or not. Uh, I still don't think so. But I don't know where your head's at with him because he's yeah, a, obviously an there. important cog here. So he had the two good starts to start his you know his rehab. Uh, the second it was against Cincinnati and then against um, San Diego. Right. Two teams that don't don't look good in the standings, but San Diego has talent. So I'm not going to say that's a that's an easy opponent to face. And then L.A., who's obviously a good team. And then the White Sox, who could fall more into the category of, yeah, there's talent in that lineup and uh, more like San Diego. So two good starts, two bad starts. I uh, my immediate reaction when I when I saw him give up all the home runs again on Thursday, I'm like. I hope there's not an injury because we talked about that weird mound visit against San Diego, the game we were at. And so right. nothing was ever, nothing came of that. Uh, has something been bothering him since then? And he's just not vocalizing it because that would not be unprecedented for Luis Severino, especially his injury history, how he most likely is terrified to go back on the IL in a contract year. He's like, I, I, I have to stay healthy the rest of this year to prove that I can at least stay on the mound. And it's like his velocity is there. His velocity, for the most part, was there on the fastball. His fastball was getting hit. Ilya put in here. He got one swing and miss on 33 fastballs, 18 total swings. And that one whiff was actually a foul tip. So not missing bats at all with his fastball. And if he's not getting swings and misses on his fastball, he's never going to be able to survive. Yeah, and the fastballs. Um, I when I was watching the game, I remember the 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 broadcast clock, and we think it, that's connected to the to the stadium clock. It was a high nineties, um, but if you look at the actual um, numbers that are documented for those fastballs, he's still living in ninety five uh, range on those those fastballs. And when you elevate a fastball that's ninety five as opposed to ninety seven, ninety eight, that's a big difference. You know, you can get the bat head around, and that's what those guys were doing. They were three three uh, elevated four seam fastballs that they, you know, demolished uh, out of the park, and that was what snake bit him. And you could tell even on that on the second one, um, you know, he was he was visibly upset, like like uh, like I like. He was surprised or he just, you know, uh, upset that that he didn't hit his spot. Um, I, I don't know what he was, you know, barking at himself about, but you could you could see that there was there was visible frustration on that. So um, to me, that means that he that he probably missed a spot uh, and and wasn't, you know, didn't fully execute it. That's kind of what what my take was from him. But, yeah, they're, they're getting to that fastball. And you're right. If you can't if you can't get that fastball by guys. Uh, then, then he's got problems. Well, much like Garrett Cole, he's a fastball pitcher. He pitches off of his fastball, and and 
he he li- when he is on he lives up in the zone with his fastball and he gets swings and misses on fastballs up in the zone and if he's not able to do that like i said he's good he's he's not going to be a good pitcher after the game he said i'm not 100 percent sure what's going on the bottom line is i need to fix it it's unacceptable i can't go out there and give up three homers every time i get the ball i need to fix it yes sevi you do need to fix it but on the uh, so that's on the one hand he's looked really bad his last two starts but then you have to like take a step back and realize this is his fourth fourth start since coming back from injury right like yet another injury but this is his fourth start of the season so if this was any other person's fourth start and they had two good two bad and it's april 16th or whatever april 25th you're like okay it's like he's he's hopefully just working through some stuff yeah and i i do think that's what it is i i think that he is working and you know those those extra two miles per hour uh, I have a feeling are, are not because of, of arm strength or, or, or health at this point, because he does look healthy. It's, it's most likely mechanics. It's most likely mechanics and, and, and the way that he is, uh, you know, finishing his pitches or, you know, just going through his, um, his, his motion. And when that's clean, when, when he's right, you know, you see the fastball jumping out of his hands. He's one of those guys that has, that has, um, you know, he's a high nineties pitcher, but, but it also looks so free and easy coming out of his hand when he's right. And I think that's what, what we're seeing is that he's laboring a little bit with the mechanics. And when, when he's, you know, when he's in sync, then you start seeing all the things going. And to me, that's what the fastball dip on the velocity is. Cause it doesn't seem like, I mean, and, and we can only look at with our eyes and 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 listen to what they're telling us with our ears about his health and everything that that he's saying and they're saying is that he's healthy but they're we're seeing different things we're seeing the fastball jump out and and to me it does look mechanical and you're right four starts in like four that starts absolutely in. can happen i i want to believe he's fully healthy because <laughs> not just because of the argument we had about luis severino but it's just like I don't know at this it, fine. Just just trust. Let's just blind trust at this point. Yeah, he, the guy's healthy until until we eventually find out otherwise. So I was listening to Boone's post game after game one on Thursday. I was in the car and he was talking about Severino. He was asked about what he saw from Severino, and he kept saying he lacked crispness. But he it sounded like he was saying Christmas, and I was like, what what is what is Boone? He doesn't have did, the spirit. He is, doesn't have it. He's not jolly enough. Like what is happening? He kept saying Christmas. And I'm just like, this is, stop saying Christmas like that. It sounds like Christmas. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's almost uh, Christmas in July, right? But we're in June. He's confused. <laughs> but he last he lacked crispness on his pitches, specifically his fastball. Was the takeaway that Boone saw from Severino? Okay, so crispness means mechanics. Right? It's hard to in say, this, right? It does sound like Christmas. Chris, Christmas, Christmas mechanics is what we're talking about here. Because if you're not crisp with uh, with the way that you're delivering, to me, that's that's just again, you know, being repeatable, making sure that your your body is is doing the things over and over again, uh, so that you can get that that extra little bit of velocity. Because it does make a massive difference when you're out of sync um, and you're and you're trying to like labor the ball over. You will have a dip. We. Also looked up if he had a lower spin rate or something like that, because you can still have a high velocity fastball, but the spin rate is lower. It's going to be more hittable, but no, his spin rate is pretty much in line with, with where it has been. So crispness in that sense is not velocity. It's not spin rate. What is it then? What, like, is it location? Because I don't think crispness is location. To me, that's just location. Well, that's what I'm saying. No, I, that's what I was talking about. Crispness to me is the mechanics is actually being crisp in the way that you're delivering the ball, oh. which can affect the location, which can affect the velocity. So if you're not crisp in the way that you're going about throwing the baseball in the pitching motion, then yes, the other things will suffer. So when you are in sync and again, like this is what they do. This is what a spring training is for. This is what, you know, rehab is for coming back and, and getting in sync with your body and with the way that you're supposed to be delivering a pitch. And to me, that is what he's talking about is the crispness of, uh, you know, the way that he's executing his pitches right now. Logan just dropped the spray chart on his pitches and uh, the, the red pink is the fastball. Not like 80% of the fastballs are up in the zone towards the, uh, if it's a right-handed hitter towards the outside upper corner of the zone or yanked low and away from right-handed hitters, like out of the zone. 
you see it's like yeah he left a few in the middle of the plate but so many fastballs just high and in that upper quadrant you know, upper away from a right-handed hitter inside on a left-handed hitter quadrant yeah and if you're not hitting the the fastball velocity that you have been hitting in the past your your fastball up in the zone becomes a lot more approachable with the barrel uh you're you're able to clear your hands get the barrel through and and do damage to uh to to a ball that's you know 94 95 as opposed to 97 98 99 uh that's a that's a big difference so you asked me am i worried i'd say i'm like not worried yet i think if we have two more starts from severino and he looks like garbage the next two outings then then you're like okay that's four out of six just not looking right so i'm not i'm not pressing the panic button yet but what about you no i'm in the same boat i i, I need more i need more time from him i need to see you know how because again like i i i he looks healthy I, I don't know how else to say that he looks healthy you know to that's that's what i see i see a guy that's 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 just trying to figure things out and and uh and clean up um, to get back to a point where he can be more consistent. That, that's what I see. And I don't see that, like that dog in Severino right now at all. You know what I mean? Like he, there's a, there's a, there's a particular look when Luis Severino is right and he's dominating hitters. And I'm just not seeing that, which means to me that confidence wise, he's not there with his mechanics. Cause if he is like that ball, it does, it looks like it's free and easy. He's got 99 with like, it looks like zero effort with him. And, and that fastball when he's, when he's right, it does. It jumps. It's got late movement. It jumps on on batters, and I'm just not seeing that yet. And I think when we start to see him a little bit more, um, you know, cleaned up, crispness, a little more crisp, then we'll start seeing the uh, the execution be at a higher level. So his next, so he's going to face. Uh, where are we in the in the calendar here? He's going to face the. Is he going to pitch next week? One of those two games against the Mets? Would he line up for that second Mets game? Yeah, and, I think the Yankees have him and Cole go in those games and i think it's chosen very landy and yeah, then he'll know. he'll face Ooh. seattle at home in his start after that so mets and then seattle in his next two tough game. matchups two good you know offensive teams that can put up you know a lot of uh, a lot of runs quick so it'll be a good test for him um but yeah he the, i think he just needs time i really i really think that's it and the other big play from the first game was in the ninth inning when the Yankees had first and second no outs down by a run with Glaber and Rizzo coming up and Glaber was swinging away, not bunting, and he popped out. And and once again, I, I was listening to the postgame press conference. No one asked him about the decision to not have Glaber Torres bunting there. And now, may, I don't know why no one asked. Him. To me, that's like an obvious question to ask. Somebody asked the question uh, when you challenged the play at the end, did you think you had something there? What what kind of a question is that? No, I, I thought we didn't have something there. What kind of a moronic, stupid ass? That's your one question to ask the manager of the New York Yankees after after a tough loss, and that's the question you go with. That is a hang up your pen, your keyboard, whoever writer. I don't know who asked the question. Hang it up. You're done. You're useless. You're useless as a baseball reporter if that is your question to the manager. Yeah, because. Of course, they're going after it for some reason. Uh, it's the last out as well, so there's there's, there's the no question harm does not need not to be asked. In... We all know why he challenged the play. Move on. Yeah. like ask a better question, please. Ask him why didn't you have Glib? Did you think about because you know the reporters don't like to ask a question in a mean way because they're always pussyfooting around like with, with the manager and Cashman. So the way that these reporters would ask it is, did you consider having Glaber bunt in that situation in the ninth inning? And just let's see what he says, right? Let's yeah. just see what he says. He'd probably say, yeah, we considered it, but we liked Glaber's approach and, and just being able to swing away there and get a big hit for us. That was probably going to be the answer, but it need you need to bring up the topic of not having Glaber Torres bunt there because the, the Yankees, uh, middle of the order, Stanton, Glaber, uh, Rizzo went over in that first game. You got no production out of them. You got production out of the bottom of the lineup. And Boone Calhoun, about, Bowers, you, you're, yeah, you, the, the out the the patchwork outfield is is uh, was was coming up huge for this team. So Boone in his post game said McKinney you know, we, with a big double and then a home run uh, later in the day. He said we have to make five runs stand up. Okay, fine. Yeah, your pitching staff, especially your bullpen, like you don't often see Michael King give up a big a big bomb like that, but you should make five runs stand up, but you also had a spot in the ninth inning to put runners on second and third with Rizzo coming up. 
and you let Glaber Torres swing away and, and he popped out. And you now maybe Glaber Torres can't bunt, right? Like, would that be shocking if he just can't execute a bunt? No. It would not but be it, shocking, but but the, you know they'll have they'll what they do is they have numbers to back that up and saying that we feel confident in him with zero with no outs first fine. and second we want to go for the win we don't want to go for the tie fine but, and if that's the case fine the question has to be asked and you need to see what he says you got a runner on score two runners in scoring position with one out I like my chances of not only Zach tying but winning something. the game something. yeah but a base hit wins the game sure. And Rizzo ended up grounding into a double play. So, you know, whatever. Uh, who knows what would have happened? I just think you have to consider it there. And if Glaber can't bunt in that situation, that's frustrating. That's a problem if you can't execute a bunt. Like, I understand, like, you're not going to have – you're never going to have Judge and Stanton and, and, and those guys bunting most likely. But Glaber is one of those guys that even when he's on, he should still be able to execute a bunt in a situation when asked upon. The, th the thing that bothers bothers me about that situation and and not going with the bunt is is that there's there's more ramifications of a successful bunt for the opposing team. If you have if you're giving up an out and you put runners on second and third, now you're you're giving the White Sox a decision. They have to make a decision on where they're going to position the infield. So they can't just sit back in double play depth. Uh, and have more angles at a ball you have you have they're probably playing even with the bag or or you know depending on on how risky they want to go they they play in I, I would assume they would play even with the bag um, just to to you know if the tie happens to, to not give up the winning run but that you're giving them an opportunity to think about what they're going to have to do and no matter what you're 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 not in double play depth anymore which means you give Rizzo more of an opportunity to sneak one of those balls past a a defender or at least have them make a play so it does put more pressure on the opposing defense when you if you can successfully bunt in that in that spot so that that's what's frustrating and like if they don't have the the um the confidence in Glaber to put it down again frustrating as a spectator because that's the play like that that yeah. is the play in that situation at home when you have uh, a team that is is not all that good and you have the heart of your lineup coming up you want yep. to put the pressure on the defense give your guys the best opportunity and if you are sitting back in double play depth uh it's not it's not the ideal situation your number two hitter when not named Aaron Judge should be able to bunt ahead of your number three and number four hitter because you get that bunt down in second and third. The White Sox have a decision. Maybe they want to walk. If they fall behind in the count to Rizzo, maybe they walk him. Even though Rizzo's been bad since returning from his injury, like maybe his neck still bothering him or something. He's won for his last 19. Okay, fine. But then you've got Stanton up next. So there might if be If your situation. second baseman can't bunt, what are we doing? <laughs> Thank you. You know Thank what I'm you. saying? Exactly. <laughs> if he's not doesn't have the ability to bunt or you don't have the confidence to to bunt. And you know, I again I don't know what the decision was if the nerds are sort of like, yeah, the percentages are much higher for the base hit. It, it, it there's there's other ramifications that happen after that. And again, if he doesn't feel the confidence and that's that that's uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. It's definitely unfortunate. And I'm just I was annoyed that they didn't ask the question and all Boone talked about after the game was Christmas. All right, we've got the Yankees and Red Sox this weekend, and then the Mets next weekend. It's an awesome time to, to go watch a baseball game in New York City. Yankees and Red Sox tickets are always hard to get, but with game time, you can find great seats for a price you are comfortable with without any stress. This weekend, if you want to go to the Sunday game, I found some tickets in our section, Scott, 205. We know how good that section is for 68 bucks all in for a pair of tickets. That's uh, it's a really good price for, a Sunday, for the Sunday night Yankees-Red Sox game. The Game Time app has a ton of cool features and is easy to use. It shows you trending tickets, what sections the best deals are in, and it calls out the cheapest options and flash deals and much more so you can make an informed purchase. There's even event cancellation protection so you can buy with confidence. Some of the reasons why I like using the app is it gives you the images of your seats before you buy, and the tickets are sent directly to your phone so you don't have to go through your email to dig them out and find them. Snag tickets today without stress with Game Time by downloading the Game Time app create an account and use our code Bronx for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. Once again, download the app, create an account code Bronx, 20 bucks off. Thank you. Game time. Enjoy whatever sporting event, concert, comedy show. They've got a ton of cool events on game time. Well, the Yankees had to avoid the sweep in the, in the second game and they, and they did um, with Vasquez getting the spot start for Cortez, who officially went on the IL and is going to have no throwing for two weeks. So when you hear the, the no throwing for two weeks, and he's going to have to come back with the ramp up time. So 
I mean, it's June 9th now. What are we looking at? Like post all-star break return for Nesta Cortez? Yeah, with a full throwing, uh, a full throwing uh, plan to get back into into shape and, and and make sure that you're rounded out. Yeah, we're 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 getting close to All Star break. Yeah, yeah, because All Star break is mid July. So, yeah, I mean, definitely, there's no reason to bring him back before that with the <clears throat> with the time gap as well. So, um, yeah, he's gonna. It, there's gonna be a lot of arms coming back at the uh, after the All Star break. In three three massive trade deadline acquisitions for Brian Cashman. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, the recovery piece when Nestor's talking about this too and and him talking about this is a here's the thing. Like this is a guy that's also telling us that he's not not he's not injured. Doesn't feel bad. But but now talking about, "Hey, I could just can't recover the way I was." Uh, to me that's that's part of 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 not feeling great. You know, if you can't recover, then you're going into your next start not feeling great. You're 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 feeling tired, you're feeling sore, you're feeling whatever. And Maybe that's not an acute injury that can be pinpointed, and and that's, you know, a good way of dodging the question. But uh, it's still it's still an well, injury. It's still it's still something that's it's hind- that that's that's preventing you from doing the thing that you need to do. Well, it's like the Radom back situation. At first, he was like, it just doesn't feel right. It's not injured. We've done our tests. It's not injured. It's not painful. It just doesn't feel right. And then that's kind of what Nestor Cortez is saying with his shoulder. It's just not bouncing back from starts. He's not able to recover on his normal timetable after a start. And then so when the fifth day rolls around, he's ready. He has to go out again. He doesn't have the same arm strength, which I think is a very clear explanation as to why he gets to the 70, 80 pitch count, fourth, fifth inning, and he just runs out of gas. Yeah, and uh, the and if there's no injury and you're not able to explain why beyond the fact that I'm just not able to to execute it, it's it's a little puzzling and and why that is because if you're doing MRIs and you're looking at you're looking for like a strain of some sort, you're looking for something in the shoulder that's saying why you're tired or why you can't continue to do this or why the strength isn't isn't staying in your arm, uh, you know, as it as it has when you're getting deeper into the inning. So at that point, I, there's really not much else you can do beyond rest uh and just just shut it down for for a time being and hope that the the rest can allow your muscles to bounce back and and really and your tendons or whatever the heck is causing this issue uh to to heal itself so they're calling it a left rotator cuff strain as as the reason he's on the il okay so that's a thing at least that's a thing it's not i don't know what it is oh it's also an easy way to say i don't know what it is mr doctor you don't know what that is or yeah, you're I mean, saying the Yankees don't know what it is. The Yankees is what I'm saying. It's I, I'm saying two things. You can, if it is a strain and you can identify it in an MRI, then great. That's that's one thing because now you can see what it is. You can you can build a program to get back from that. Or you're still not seeing it and you're just calling it a strain because you got to put something on the paper for the IL stint. Yeah, to me that's more what it's like. And a, and a, and a strain is a, like, is a pretty <clears throat> easy thing to put down. What's the most benign thing we can put here? That's not going to raise too many alarm bells. Strained it. Strained it. Yeah. Sprained it. No, a sprain is worse than a strain. Sprain and a strain, pretty much the same thing. Well, I think like a sprain is like something, it's like almost, almost broke, but like it almost snapped, but it didn't quite snap. It's like so when you're the, saying the, a the rubber band leads to a sprain? I think so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. First comes strain, strain, then comes sprain, then comes tear. Tear because because a sprain technically is a tear. Strain could be a tear, just like a contusion is a bruise. Contusion. They should have called it a contusion. That's like a deep bruise, though. That's a that's a that's a that's something to impact. Impact ha- uh, gives you a contusion, mm-hmm. not necessarily uh, you know just tired arm. Yeah, we don't see the dead arm IL reasoning <laughs> often, even though that's kind of like, to, uh, like we said last episode, it's like this just seems sounds like a dead arm. Tommy Canely gave me the worst child, uh, the worst Charlie horse in the in the clubhouse, and we're calling it a contusion. I could see Canely going around giving Charlie horses. Yeah. So I mean, are you are you? <clears throat> we're gonna get a lot of pitching depth back, you know, mid July if all goes well. Radon as well had. Uh, his timetable, if all goes well, is right around the All Star break. He he did uh, face hitters at Yankee St- Stadium, threw twenty pitches, and uh, sat around ninety two to ninety four miles an hour. <laughs> so that seems low. 
Maybe we need a new. Uh, maybe we need a new gun at the at Yankee Stadium that 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 actually shows velocity a little higher. Ninety two to ninety four seems low, does it not? Where is he normally not, sitting? Is, yeah, isn't he ninety five, ninety six? Not yeah, for he's, his, he's at least ninety five. Yeah, not up to ninety seven, ninety eight. But not for like this twenty pitch throwing session at Yankee Stadium. I feel like he's not going to be going all out, especially in like how long has he been throwing? He's been throwing for a good bit now, has he not? He's been yeah. doing the bullpens and the long toss and all that kind of stuff. He got out of right. mound for the first time probably like maybe 10 days ago. Are they yeah. saying anything about when he will actually face in-game hitters like in spring training or in um, minors? No, but you'd assume that he's close to facing live hitters. So probably I would say probably like by the 20th. Are we worried about him going out doing that 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 uh that pitching session in the middle of the apocalypse? Yes, that was my next thing. I'm extremely worried about that. Yeah, because because now he's got you know uh uh yeah what, what are they calling? It? It's like whatever you can't see them. Well, it, in New York you could see them, but like you know fiberglass or whatever the hell in your lungs now. Uh, it's one of those. It's not fiberglass. That's asbestos. Uh, but smoke little 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 uh little harmful elements that I saw are not visible to the eye when you're looking at them closely. I saw a headline that if you exert yourself in that air quality, it's like yeah. smoking like a pack of cigarettes or something like that. Yeah. So, so maybe 90, maybe 92 to 94 in that air quality is like 99, a hundred in, in, in like pristine air quality. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe he was afraid to hit the batters. That's why he was scaling it back a little bit because you know also it's hard to see the ball it's hard to see the batter and all that smoke like gets in your eyes your eyes tear up who knows yeah how does the orange work as a back as a backdrop to, to the white ball Pro That's probably it. not great because yeah. it was kind of like a yellow orangey just like haziness not great yeah no i could i can imagine that not being a good thing um, but yeah i, I you know don't wouldn't hate a a, a tunnel bullpen session at that yeah point. you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah just I agree. Like they've got uh, the new Yankee stadium has like indoor batting cages and everything that I'm sure he could have thrown on. I bet there's air, air filters in there too. I bet mm -hmm. they could test the air quality and change it. So we're kind of joking, but at the same time, I'm putting it at like a 15% chance that he has a setback for, for doing that in the smoke, <laughs> a lung injury. <laughs> yeah. Get some kind of a lung. Oh my God. That would be a new thing. Look, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm talking about the velocity with him, but to be to be very uh, very real about this, I'm glad he's not coming out there trying to throw 98, 99 like he did, you know, and how he got himself hurt. So at least he's trying to and understanding that this is not a uh, a tough guy situation unless he's like, yo, I'm going outside. Well, is I'm not is I'm it? not doing the tunnel. I'm going <laughs> yeah. outside. So I'm maybe, going outside. Maybe, maybe who's coming were, with who's coming gonna, with me? They were going to have him throw. Yeah. What hitters did he throw to? Do we know? Is it just like whoever? Or was it like people on the Yankees roster? And was it the bullpen catchers that they interviewed on Sunday Night Baseball? <laughs> the, uh, so maybe he would, they wanted him to throw underneath the tunnel. And he's like, no, I've got to prove Like, I've got to be a part of this team. Like, I've got to man up for my teammates. I need visuals. Oh, back pain can be linked to shortness of breath. Breathing oh, increases the intra-abdominal abdominal pressure on spine. Taking deep breaths, coughing, bearing down, all of this can add up to back pain. So in that thick, smoky air, he had to breathe heavier. That's why you, <laughs> literally every news outlet's like, do not exercise outside. Do not exert yourself outside in this air quality. Rodon, let's go outside. <laughs> it's that meme. Everybody else is just huddled. Rodon <laughs> pitching on the mound. <laughs> In I swear to God, nobody but uh, in front of nobody but cameras. You know what? I said fifteen percent. I'm up in that to at least twenty percent. Twenty percent chance the setback. There's a setback caused by exerting himself in in the poor air quality. Oh my gosh! If there's a strain, a back strain because of his lung, <laughs> excessive breathing, excessive lung capacity strains Radon's back. So do you remember uh, Joel Zumaya? Remember uh -huh. that that name? Tigers. Remember? Remember he hurt himself playing Guitar Hero. I don't remember that, but he, I remember. He, I think Joel he needed. Zemaya. I think he needed Tommy John surgery because he played too much Guitar Hero. Um, that's one of the great, like the great stupidest ways to go down as a pitcher. Put up, put throwing an unnecessary session on the Yankee Stadium mound in the apocalypse smoke, right up there with Guitar Hero. 
Yeah, that's a that's a bad one. That's like uh, Kyler Murray was, uh, you know, was dealing playing uh, Call of Duty and getting carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, ha- affecting his uh, his ability to throw a football. Yeah. Um, and then also Aaron Judge also officially on the IL retroactive to June fourth. Billy McKinney was added to the roster. They're saying Judge's toe is not fractured or broken, according to the team physician, Dr. Ahmad. Boone said the biggest thing now is trying to get the swelling out of there. He had some improvements on Tuesday, but now we'll see where he is in the coming days and week. But the biggest thing is getting the swelling out of there. I think it definitely could have been worse. Hopefully it's on the shorter side of things. And there was an interesting decision. We I don't know if we talked about Cole Calhoun opting out of his deal with the Yankees on June 1st, but he opted out of his minor league deal on June 1st, and the Yankees had 72 hours to add him to the roster. And this injury for Judge happened on June 4th. So it was kind of just like bad timing on all of this because like, I don't know, is Cole Calhoun really that much no. of an upgrade in this situation? It's just He's not an upgrade. He's not an upgrade. He's pretty old at this point too, is he not? He's been around for a very long time, and he's been bouncing around. No, but I, I'd I would much imagine... rather have Willie Calhoun than Cole Calhoun. <laughs> There's too many Calhouns on the roster. But I would imagine had this happened June 3rd or something like that, Cal- Cole Calhoun would be on the roster and not Billy McKinney. I, I don't know why. Billy McKinney is, uh, is, is, has, been, has been playing well in AAA. I think he's got like nine or ten home runs, uh, you know, hitting at a 270-some clip, I think because I watched some of those games and he's, he's a, uh, you know, he's a guy who's got familiarity. He's been in the, he's been on the team in the past. Number one, former number one draft pick trying to catch some lightning at a bottle here and performed well, man. Like he's, he's a, he's a decent defender and he does have some pop. So um, that's a guy that was derailed by injuries early in his career. And I know he's bounced around a little bit, but he's a nice, he's a nice reserve player. He could play a little first base too. Can he, he's, he's got some uh, flexibility. Yeah. Cole Calhoun. No. Yeah, I mean, it's not ultimately it's not that big of a deal. The outfield is such a cluster right now with Judge out and Bader out that it's it's it is what it is for for the time being. I was thinking, are they gonna and they're playing well? The guys are change. playing well. Yeah, I mean, sure, but Jake like, Bowers is playing well. Calhoun's playing well. These Bowers guys are, are performing. I I was thinking maybe uh, they because didn't they say Stanton's not going to play the outfield for a couple weeks? I was wondering if they were going to change their mind on that, but probably not. Probably not. I mean, Boone said it would, they were going to ease him into outfield, uh, outfield duty. So you know that's whatever that means. But it's like two days in right field. I don't know. I'm not going over this again. It's just fr- you know whatever. It's it's frustrating. Let's again, see. if they're if they were not performing, these guys they're 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 holding their own though. So they're they're definitely holding down the fort. And and I expect Judge to be back. You know when he's first eligible. If there's no break or or, or fracture or anything like that, like this is a matter of. Uh, you know, him just jamming his toe against that unnecessary concrete block that's out there, uh, then I expect him to be back. Well, it was retroactive to the fourth. So that means he's active to come off the IL on the 15th, right? Which means he would be back for the Boston series in Boston, June 16th, because next week they've got 13th and 14th, two games against the Mets. And then, so yeah, if he's back Friday, the 16th in Boston, no, you're shaking your head, Logan. I would, I would bet a lot of money he's not back for that series. Okay, okay. Let's 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 pick the date then. I'm not. Okay, is he? Let's do it. Is he back for the next home stand, June twentieth to the twentieth, twenty fifth, Seattle and Texas? Is he back on that in one of those home stand in one of those games? Yes, <laughs> I think he's gonna be back. When's Boston? Or well, Boston. Uh, well, they're playing Boston this weekend at home. Yeah. Obviously, he's not eligible to come off the IL until the 15th, okay? Yeah. And that's an off day. So then the next game is Friday in Boston, June 16th. Three games right. in Boston. Is he I, Logan saying he's not back that series. And then they've got Monday off, and they come home for Seattle, Texas. If he's not like back it. that home stand, we're, we all need to be worried because then they're severely downplaying this injury. If this is just a swollen toe, and he's then not he should ready. be back for the Boston series. He right. should be. But I, I don't like it, the things they're saying. They're doing the thing where they're not being very clear on anything. And they like, Boone, did you hear? Did you guys hear Boone snip at the media? Like, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you on a timeline. Like, I don't. I, when, he's, when he's vague, it's never good. Never good. When is he ever specific? No, when he's specific, he's never specific. it's bad. Because no. he say something specific and then it's completely wrong. That's happened yeah. a million times too. They've yeah, given maybe, timelines. But- 
they used to give like kind of timelines on guys and then that that which you, would you hated which you hated i hated because they would say like yeah we're we're expecting like a late may return and then it would be early july and the guy's still freaking doing long toss in the outfield and you're like well that timeline was wrong complication andrew complications yeah, too much smoke you know, i feel like today they like this year i mean they've been kind of like realistic with the timeline like they were six weeks we stanton stanton was six weeks that was that was true like so you're saying because they didn't give a timeline and they're not giving a timeline on judge. i'm not saying the, so they specifically this is a I'm, very different injury this is not a, a soft tissue injury where you're where you're uh i mean in theory around the around the the toe it's it could be ligament but it's so the only reason i'm ligament. with it is, a lig- reason, it is it's a ligament it's ligament but it's not it's it's not strained from uh from effort which is different it's strained from impact, impact. yeah i hope i'm wrong I, so the I only reason Boston, but. I think there's some validity to Logan saying not back for that Boston series is because that Monday is off. So it's only three extra games that they would be playing without judge. And then you can get them back with like four extra days rest for the 20th at home against Seattle. Michael K. I mean, okay, that, that's fine. If that's the case, then, and you're giving him those, those extra days because of that, uh, then, then fine. But you know th- they need these games, so it's it's not like we're 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 looking at a team that has the ability to, uh, you know, to dick around with with any of these AL East games. Like this is a bad Boston team. You need to win those games. What were you saying? Um, I was listening to Michael K yesterday, and he said, "I'm not going to be a doctor, but if I had to guess, I'd put it at a month, four weeks." So I don't know if that's where my negative I mean, Michael K has got it. From. So to but me, what that is, so someone, Michael, someone slipped to him yes, that exactly. this is going to be longer than people it, are giving him credit for. A thousand percent. If Michael K is saying something like that, he's got insider information. And he can't say I have insider information, but so he has saying, to frame it like I'm guessing. This is just how I'm thinking. But what that means is whenever Jack Curry or Michael K or one of those guys says something like that, that means someone told them. My gut was going to be to say he's he'll be back for July 4th. That was my gut. When's the All-Star game? Like the July 11th. Of, yeah. July 11th. So we're going to get him ready to to to, to get Ooh, go into the history. acquisition. Oh, man. Brian, <laughs> I'm going to have to update that Brian Cashman history episode for the just amazing job he did at the 2023 trade deadline acquiring Aaron Judge, the best player in baseball, Carlos Radon, one of the best free agent pitchers on the baseball, Luis Severino, right? Oh, he's, he's already back. That doesn't count. Yeah, I but he's not really back because he's not pitching well. I think they're going to acquire Montas, Harrison Bader. Harrison one Bader. These, one Frankie Montas. Back-to-back You're... acquisitions of Frankie Montas. And and Harrison Bader. Wow. Cash pretty. God. It's pretty unbelievable. Nestor. Nasty Nestor Cortez. All-star lefty. Unreal. Last time they last time he came, was was acquired was all for uh, rule they five. Didn't, they didn't even trade any prospects to get these guys. It's crazy. How did he do this? Unbelievable. <laughs> Miracles do happen. All right, let's talk about DJ LeMahieu. We're going to do an eye test versus a nerd test on DJ LeMahieu because we cannot figure this out right now. Eye test versus nerd test is brought to you by Oakley. There is more than meets the eye with Oakley sunglasses thanks to their amazing prism technology. When you put these things on, everything pops. I bet if you wore the prism technology in the smoke, you wouldn't even see smoke. That's how good they are. I, I, I cannot claim that to be true. So Oakley, we can, we can claim that to be true. We can, Oakley is not claiming that. Right. I'm claiming to be clear. Oakley did not say that, but they didn't, but the, not but say the blue it. lenses make the orange look pristine. DJ is not having a good year. Overall, he's got a 93 OPS plus, which is 7% below league average. He's hitting 239, so I don't think he's going to win that batting title I projected him to win. Last 20 games, May 10th, uh, starting around May 10th, 83 plate appearances, a 180 batting average of 498 OPS. In that span, his batting average dropped from 278 to 239 and his OPS from 825 to 697. So as of May 10th, he was having a good year, and then yeah, he some... started off the season hot. Like it, we were all ex- ex- it wasn't excited hot, though. It wasn't like no. Hot, he looked healthy. He looked, he looked like himself. Healthy. He, looked he looked healthy. Like himself. Exactly. Something's going on though. Like he, this guy does not look healthy at the plate. He is not driving the ball. He's not hitting the ball to the opposite field. Uh, we we sort of dissected his spray charts, and and he's just not driving the ball the other way. Eight of his 15 extra base hits and five of his six home runs this year are to right field. We know if he is hitting the ball with power to right field, 
that means DJ DJ is on his game. He's pulling so many ground balls for outs. If you look at his spray charts on his outs, there's so many gray bubbles just to the left side of the infield. And then from uh, starting in May, he only has seven total hits to the opposite field. His um, the probably the biggest cause for concern though, or the biggest flag that DJ LeMahieu is not right. He's got a 27.3% strikeout rate this year. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. The, the, the number that blew me away was the, um, Ilya or Logan put it in the, in our, our chat in the notes, but the, the increased percentage, uh, being the highest in the league is insane. He's a 13 to 14% strikeout rate guy and he's striking out 27% of the time. Yeah. Something's not right. Something's no. not right. Something's very not right with DJ LeMahieu. And do we think it's the, it's I mean, gotta be the you, toe. You gotta go back to the toe. You have yes. to go back to the toe. The toe yeah. that they were going to do surgery on, then they were going to do two two toes of surgery, and then they did no toes of surgery. Yeah. I don't know, he's not driving the ball to the opposite field. It, 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 that's sort of what we saw when his toe got injured last year. He was having a, a, a good year, and then all of a sudden he – The he power kinda, just went away completely he's hitting, too. He's hitting like flat-footed up there. It's basically mm-hmm. he's all upper body swinging up there. Yeah, I, that's it's – the only thing you can describe because DJ LeMahieu is such a pure hitter when he's when he's right that uh, you know this is we were talking about this guy as as being one of the ones that doesn't get affected by you know the lack of shift at this point because no one shifted on him he he goes pole to pole he he does whatever he wants with the bat like he's a he's a craftsman with the bat um, at the plate and when you don't have your lower body uh, you know engaged as he has clearly that's a very big issue for anybody, but for DJ LeMahieu, when he's trying to go to the left field, when he's trying to pull the ball, he's probably rolling over. Do we have a, do we have a chart on like where the, um, uh, where they're pitching him? Is that, is that something that is, is able to, cause I'm wondering if they're identifying, if, if I'm a, if I'm an opposing team and I have a book on DJ and I'm seeing that he's not going, uh, to right field, I'm still going to throw him outside so that he's rolling over on these uh, on these ground ball on on the outside pitch. Oh because yeah, because you pitch outside in the zone to DJ normally when he's right. That's murder. He kills he's going to line balls to right field all day. But if he if he's not able to get his lower body engaged and get his mechanics to a point where yeah. he can get the bat out extended and and you know attack that ball because he's attacking that ball uh, to right field. He's not so, he's not doing it because he's late. He's doing it on purpose. And if he can't do that then you're seeing what we're seeing and that's him rolling over on balls and going to left field and pulling it. And that's not when he's good. When was it the Balt one of the Baltimore losses last homestand where DJ was up with bases loaded late in the game and he just had an atrocious at bat. Just like, it, it was just like this guy that's not an at bat that a healthy DJ LeMay has, he just completely lost in the at bat and it was bases loaded late in the game. That's a situation he's, normally going to drive the ball, put the ball in play, do something positive. And he was just, he was just completely overmatched at the plate. And I remember Logan immediately put in our chat, DJ's not healthy. Like that's not. And, that- and, yeah. And if that's the case too, I mean, you go back to yesterday uh, when he pinch hit for Billy McKinney um, uh, coming in and I, it, it was a good matchup. It was the, it was the, uh, the, the side, you know, the, the side winding, uh, left-hander, which in theory is a tremendous matchup for DJ, uh, especially if he's going to, to right field. And he didn't, he, he, he rolled over on a ball. Um, McKinney's got a hop out right now and has been playing well all day. You know, that's, if he is injured and we're looking at that situation where we're trying to bust something open here, um, I don't know. It's hard for me to say that you're going to a guy like DJ LeMahieu in that spot when you know he's not right. You know what I'm saying? After seeing yeah. what McKinney has done for the day. So, oh, you're saying that why would you pinch it LeMay? Like if Boone and the coaching staff knows DJ is not 100%, why are yeah. you putting him in that spot? Right. Which which leads me to two that things. That is a I, good I, argument for him being okay. That is a good argument for that. Yeah, unless he, he, I mean, does DJ LeMahieu talk in the in the in the clubhouse? No, but at this point, it's it's been a month plus of him just looking awful. You don't think they like, oh, something's wrong with DJ? Let's do some tests on him or something. Well, I I didn't mind it if if he if he is if if he's healthy and he's just not playing well, which I kind of don't believe because that's not him. He doesn't play well for long stints like this. The the matchup was great for him. That the matchup with uh, you know the the guy that was coming in, I forget his name. The um, it was the a guy was that a tri- wears that cuffs his freaking baseball pants. Is, is that the guy you're talking about? Yeah, he he had, he was just coming back from injury. This dude, he uh, I think he pitched in the ALDS 
um, last year or no, 2021, I think is, is what they were talking about. Anyway, it's a, it's a good matchup. Like that, that's a great matchup for DJ, uh, left-handed side, sidearm guy, right-handed bat. Like you, you see that ball really well coming in. Um, so I understand the move if, if LeMahieu is sitting there and healthy, uh, but if he's not healthy, I'm, I'm not quite understanding that. So, so there's a the, disconnect somewhere. The guys just dropped in a pitch chart on DJ. Is that number of pitches thrown? Those numbers means number of pitches. So out, outside low and away, 151 pitches thrown by far the most, um, uh, pretty much double than any other quadrant in, in the zone. Low and in is 87, up and in is 80, high and away 56, and then you know between 40 and, and 70 in the, in, in the strike zone. But low and away outside of the strike zone is dark red, 151 pitches seen in that zone. There you go. That's, that's a, I think that's a tell. That's a tell that, that the opposing pitchers are seeing a weakness in DJ. And if that weakness is a real weakness, it's probably because of uh, 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 a limitation he has with the way that he's swinging the bat. And, and it very well could be the tell. It very well could be the tell. But if you're attacking DJ LeMahieu on the outside of the plate, a fully healthy DJ Lemay, he's going to make you pay for that. And and clearly he's not doing it. And clearly they are seeing that he's not doing that. Yeah. So I don't know what the solution is here with DJ. It's like, they're going to keep playing him and hoping, hoping he turns it around, or you're going to have to put him on the IL. <laughs> like they, They've started to like, I don't know if you guys have noticed since Donaldson is back, they've basically just been alternating them every game. Yeah. yeah. Like and Donaldson's been playing well. Damn, Donaldson's defense is good. It's yeah. just like every day I see that guy. I don't care how old he is. His defense is still freaking. DJ top though, point. Statcast. DJ's eight, top eighty-one percentile of outs above average, and that could be on a bum toe. So, so it, what does that what does that mean then? Com- I don't know. I don't know. I, no, I'm just at. saying. Like the toe, in theory, should also impact DJ's defense. Yeah, less so at third base, though. Definitely less so at third base. I'd say. Because of the, you know, you don't need, it's more reactionary, less, less rangy. So, but yes, he, he, the glove still works, right? Like, and, and it's a different, it's a different type of movement um, for, for him when you got to get that toe down uh, to hit a ball. It's, it's just, it's different. So I test TJ doesn't look healthy. Nerd test Mm-mm. DJ definitely does not look healthy. The 27% strikeouts is, is alarming. Thank you to Oakley for sponsoring eye test versus nerd test. Go to Oakley.com for more information and to find a pair of Oakley sunglasses for your needs, whether that is golf, baseball, the beach, running, or just everyday use. Um, Oakley will be with us for the next month or so. Awesome sunglasses. Thanks again. Okay. What else? What else do you want to chat about? Red Sox. Red Sox this weekend. Red Sox. Red Sox coming in and they're, 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 uh, you know, I think when they first started the season, everybody's looking at them like, what, why are they, how, what are they? They're playing well. No, they're not playing well. They're they're a bad baseball team. And the Yankees should absolutely take care of them and mop the floor. I'm going Saturday night. Nice. I got, I got gifted some tickets. But uh So Saturday night means you don't have to get back cuz it's night, right? You don't have there's no duties coming. You're not coming back well, to anything. I'm driving, so I'm not going to you're not going to find me at Billy's or the dugout at 1 o'clock in the morning. No, but you can stay for the whole game. Oh yeah, I will stay for the whole, assuming the Yankees aren't losing 9 to 1, I'll be there for right. the whole game. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, also, I I left the game, Yankees Mets game last year at City Field. Okay, do you realize uh-huh. how far City Field is? Yeah, from I my know house? where it is. Okay. Yeah, it's far. It's not close. It's very far. It was like a Wednesday night. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's fine. You know, you leave early. It's it's you don't have to apologize. It's you. Just you've never you've never left a, a a game early. I don't think I've ever left a game early ever. That's got to be false. No, it's true. I don't leave. I how I don't even know how I would be able to stomach leaving a game early. It's not over. We. I would feel like such an asshole walking up the aisle, knowing that I'm leaving. So there's no grounds for leaving a game early. No, there are grounds. If it's if it's if it's an utter embarrassment, then then potentially. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely a line. But what I don't is, remember is ever it doing six it. Six runs with no, no. I've seen. What about I've seen six, way too many six run comebacks? <laughs> six runs in the eighth inning. They've got six more outs. Oh no, I'm watching that whole game. 100. percent Ten runs. D- in the I need eighth double inning? digit. I need a double digit. If there's Ten. a double digit lead and it's an embarrassment, uh, then then you can tell that they're just swinging at everything and trying to mail it in. Like at that point, 
at that point, uh, there's a potential to leave. Do you remember the Yankees Red Sox game at Fenway Park? I forget what year this was. It was when the Red Sox were managed by Bobby Valentine. So this was like 2010 or 2012. No, I don't um, remember this game. The Yankees were losing nine to nothing and they came back at Fenway Park. I okay. stayed for th- I stayed for that game, but my dad left. <laughs> Ooh. Because my dad had to drive back to Rhode Island. It was like the sixth inning. The Yankees were down nine to one. They were just getting spanked. And I was there with a buddy and my dad and my mom came because we had four tickets. And my dad and my mm-hmm. mom left in the sixth inning. And then the Yankees comeback started. And he was not happy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, was it his decision to leave? <clears throat> I think it was like a collective. He and my mom were like, we've got an hour and a half drive back to Rhode Island. Like, let's get the hell yeah. out of here before traffic right. is too bad. Uh, sixth inning is too early. Sixth inning is too early. You know, if you're trying to beat traffic and you're trying to get out like ahead and, and it's a nine, one game one, the, 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 the crowd's going to filter out. Not, maybe not, a, not there because they're winning. No, but no, yeah, no, no one, a few Yankees fans were leaving, but no Red Sox fans were leaving. Cause it was also like a Friday four o'clock game. So yeah. people, it was like that. It was a Fox game. I, I forget what year this was. If you guys could just Google like Yankees nine, one comeback. You're also putting yourself in a very bad situation. Walking at a, an opposing park yeah you uh, just losing get nine one the oh, whole way yeah. i'm not dealing with that shit i'm gonna stay till the no, end and it, suffer it, through it that. definitely was not 2009 because i'm 100 positive bobby valentine was managing the red sox i would have no problem getting the heckles afterwards if we got our ass kicked at the end of the game when everybody's leaving but i'm not i'm not i'm not subjecting myself to well, walking up the aisles in boston while they're losing 2012 and, and just it was 2012 yeah. towering like a defeated fan walking past them saying i'm leaving early because i'm pouting so i'm not doing that I'm also because it was a it was a four o'clock saturday game so people were drunk people were drunk as shit and yeah and we had good seats too we were like they weren't box seats, but they were like the next best thing to box seats on the third base side. Yeah. So you had to walk a long way all the way up the aisle. If you're familiar with Fenway Park, it's a long walk to the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not doing that. Not doing that. Yeah. For many not, reasons. Nine, nothing in the sixth inning. That was so much fun. I think Teixeira hit a grand slam. Nick Swisher hit like a double off the center field wall. And then I think they brought in. I think Teixeira also had like a three run home run in that game. It was, it was crazy. A Swisher grand slam. Okay. Yeah, it was that was a fun that was a fun comeback. Nick Swisher, Grand Slam, uh, being down that much, what level of fired up is that guy? I mean, probably almost oh, combust, almost he, combusts at that point. He hit he hit the go ahead. It was either the game tying or the go ahead double. And at that point, he like when he got on second base, he screamed, and everyone in the ballpark except Yankees fans were were silent, so you could hear him very clearly screaming on second base. That's fun. hilarious. It's yeah. fun. I I enjoy beating. I I get so much more enjoyment out of beating teams in their home ballpark than beating teams at at home at Yankee Stadium. It's just so much fun to be there as a as an opposing fan when your team is doing something crazy like that. Yeah, it is. If you like the chaos and if you like the uh, you know the back and forth, then then it's great. It is. If you're if you're not one that that embraces that and and you. You know, some people just don't like that. Um, it and, just comes they, down they to I like, I like, I love it. I suffer. love it. So I like, I, I like especially, watching. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I, I honestly, that was probably in college. I had so many friends that were, uh, that were Red Sox fans and I loved seeing them miserable. I, I, I thrived on it Yeah, for, for that. And not for personal reasons, like anything outside sports, but for no. sports, yeah. I thrived on it. Oh yeah. The, I needed it. I needed if, it. If you can watch your team succeed on the field and then turn to your right and see a pouting Red Sox fan, that that's it. That's the it pinnacle. It makes it so much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I'll be at that Saturday game. So if you're, if you're going, uh, you know, I don't shout, tag me on Twitter and maybe I'll meet up with you even though I don't open Twitter anymore. Anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> Now we're good, man. Let's get into the weekend. Hopefully the air quality is uh, is in a better spot for everybody. It's clearer this morning in North Jersey. So that's good. Much clearer. That's All good. Right. Let's get these let's get these fires under control, huh? Yeah. Jeez. They need some rain, I guess, right? I don't know. Rain, rain would help. That's water. I'm not a weatherman, but rain seems like the solution. Yeah. They didn't they didn't teach us uh any of that stuff in medical school. All right, we'll talk to you guys on Monday.